Hi, I'm Anna at The Sewing Studio and in this video I'm going to talk you through our top three sewing machines for dressmaking. Now, you can make clothes on most sewing machines, however, our top picks have been specifically selected due to the stitches they have, the combination of buttonholes, overcasting, lots of different principles, and the fact that they can handle different types of fabric. So, what are they? In third place is the Brother Innovis A80. In second place is the Janome Atelier 3. And in first place is the Bonina 540. So let's take a look at each one in a bit more detail. Our third place machine, the Brother Innovis A80, has 80 different stitch options and included in that is eight different buttonholes depending on what type of fabric you're using. These are easily selected with this dial here. You have the ability to change your stitch width and your stitch length and it has a maximum seven millimeter stitch width. You've got a twin needle setting, a needle up down, securing stitch and your reverse. Now it's a computerized machine, which means that it comes with a foot pedal. That's one way you can operate the machine or you have a start stop button. And then this slider here controls your speed. It's got a built in needle threader. It's called a one action needle threader and it's really very easy. And the bobbin is a drop in bobbin. So it drops in from the top and then it has what's called a quick set where you lay the thread in and you're ready to sew. There's no need to draw up the bobbin thread. You can also drop the feed dogs for if you want to do any darning work. And then this storage piece on the front just pops off to give you your free arm. It comes with a different range of presser feet. You've got your standard foot that's on the machine, a zipper foot or piping foot, a blind hem foot, an overcasting foot, an open toe foot for decorative stitches, a foot for sewing on buttons, and one for doing the buttonholes. Not forgetting the range of accessories that are included. So I'm gonna get it plugged in and show you how it handles some different types of fabrics and a couple of different applications. I've got a thin piece of polyester that tends to slip around a bit. So I'll show you how the machine handles that. So you can see that's a nice straight stitch. It was just a standard straight stitch, but I did increase the length slightly due to the nature of the fabric. It's a nice neat stitch and it sits nice and flat. Moving on to some stretch fabric. This has a slight rib to it. So I've chosen the lightning stitch, which is the correct one for this fabric. I've also put a ballpoint needle on. increased it to top speed through there so that you could see how fast the machine sews. As you can see, it's handled this fabric really nicely. The stitch is nice and neat both sides. It lays nice and flat and you can stretch the fabric along with the stitch. So a denim test. Now I don't just want to show you sewing two pieces of denim together because most machines will cope with that. What I get asked mostly is when hemming the jeans and going over that bulky seam when it's the seam on seam. So I've already got the seam here, so I'm gonna double it over and show you how the machine handles that. I'm using a standard straight stitch and I've just increased the stitch length to cope with the thickness. Now, as you saw there, I had to give it a little hand to push the fabric over the bulky bit, but nevertheless, it's sewn through it really nicely. There's no skip stitches. There's no bunching up there. It's done a really good job. And it's quite a secure seam. 
Moving on to overcasting your seams, I've chosen just a basic overcast stitch. And then I'm just, oh, I've popped on the overcasting foot as well. This is just a standard needle. And this has got a guide on it that you run the edge of your fabric so that your loops will be right at the very edge. And there you have a nice neat overcast to stop your seam from fraying. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to do a buttonhole. I've just got this cotton fabric, so I'm going to choose a standard buttonhole. Number 44. It's already preset the stitch length and the stitch width to sew the buttonhole. And it's telling me to use foot A, which is the buttonhole foot. And how this works is you push that piece out pop the button in and then secure the button in there as far as it will go and then you want to snap the foot onto the machine I'll just take that out lift that up and snap that on now you want to bring the needle thread down underneath the foot and you do that by dropping the needle down back up again and then using something small and sharp to pull them through underneath pop those around the back and then up in here there's a little sensor that comes down and that's what's going to determine the size of our buttonhole. Now it will automatically form the buttonhole a couple of millimetres larger than the button that's in the back so that when it's done you can easily get the button in and out. So just drop that down and away we go. And there you have a nice, neat buttonhole. Our second place machine, the Genomi Atelier 3, has over 100 different stitch options. They're all listed on the top here, and there's seven different buttonhole styles. They're selected with the numerical keypad down here, where you can also change your stitch width and your stitch length. Again, it has a maximum stitch width of seven millimeters. You can mirror stitch some of the decorative stitches on there, and you also have a twin needle setting. It's got an automatic thread cutter, your needle up, needle down, a securing stitch slash pattern end, and again, start stop button with speed control, but it does come with a foot pedal. You've got eight inches of space to the right of the needle and a built-in needle threader. It's a top loading, drop in, bobbin. And again, it's got the easy set where you just lay the thread, no need to draw up the bobbin thread. You can disengage the feed dogs and this pops off to give you your free arm. This also comes with a range of different presser feet. You've got the standard one that's on the machine, a foot for sewing on zips or piping, blind hem, overcasting, a clear satin stitch foot, and a quarter inch foot, and also the automatic buttonhole foot. It also comes with a range of different accessories. Included in that is a spare spool pin for when you're doing any twin needle work. So let's see how this one handles the same different types of fabric and applications. Firstly, I'll show you how it handles some finer fabric. This is the slippy polyester. All I've basically done is switch the machine on. It defaults to a standard straight stitch, which is what I need, and it's got the right needle on. As you can see, it had full control of the fabric and it's done a really nice, neat stitch. There's a little bit of pucker in there because I probably should have just increased the stitch length slightly and that would have given a better result and it would lay flat. 
Moving on to the stretch fabric, I've chosen the appropriate lightning stitch for this fabric and popped a ballpoint needle on. I increased the speed up to the top speed during that, just so you can see how fast the machine sews. But it's done a really neat stitch on this stretch fabric, which can be tricky sometimes. It lays completely flat, which is what you want, and you can stretch the fabric along with the stitches. With the denim fabric, I'm gonna show you the bulky seam. I've popped a denim needle on the machine and increased the stitch length slightly. Now you could hear then when it was going over the seam that it was having to work slightly harder, but it's still sewn through it no problem at all. There's no skip stitching, there's no bunching, and the seam is nice and tight. Overcasting, there's a few different options on this machine, but I want it to sew it and overcast it at the same time, so I've chosen number 13. I've got a standard needle and the overcasting foot on the machine, and this one has a guide on it. So you're basically running the edge of the fabric along that guide. And there you have a nice neat edge to your seams. Lastly, the buttonhole. This is the buttonhole foot. And what you do is pop the back out and then slot your button in. Oops. And push that down. And then that's gonna determine the size of buttonhole that you need for that button. It will add a couple of millimeters on there so that it's big enough. I've chosen a standard buttonhole stitch because I'm gonna do it on some cotton. And you'll see here it's telling me to use foot letter R, which is this one. But it's also got this little symbol here, which is basically a sensor that comes down. So let me pop that one off for a minute. And I'll pop this one on. So that thing, that symbol is a little sensor that just needs to pop down from in there. Pop the fabric in. And there you have a nice neat buttonhole. Our first place machine, the Benina 540, has over a thousand different stitch options. Included in that is 14 buttonholes. Now they're all in this touch screen and they're all neatly tucked away in folders so they're easy to find. You still have quite easy access to the things we most commonly use. So your stitch width and your stitch length, and the maximum stitch width on this machine is nine millimeters. You have buttons to change your needle positions, of which there are 11 different positions. You've got a pattern end, needle up, needle down, and again, your speed control and start-stop button, but it does come with a foot pedal. The locking stitch, the automatic thread cutter, and your reverse. It's got a built-in needle threader, and you can drop the feed dogs. It's a front loading bobbin. Now this bobbin is 70% larger than a standard bobbin, so you can fit a lot more thread on it and it runs out a lot less often. Also, all you do when you pop it in is you just cut the thread on the little cutter and then again, you can just start sewing. There's no need to draw up the bobbin thread. There's automatic tension on this machine, 
and also the bobbin winder is an independent bobbin winder so you don't have to unthread the needle thread in order to wind your bobbin. It comes with a range of different presser feet, again the standard one that's on the machine, a foot for sewing on zips or piping, one for overcasting, an open toe satin stitch and your buttonhole foot. It also comes with a range of different accessories. So we'll get this one plugged in and do exactly the same test. However, there's a little bit more on this one because it has a couple of different guides and tutorials to help you along the way. So I'll show you those as well. I've got some fine polyester fabric that tends to slip and slide around. So I'm just gonna show you how the machine handles this. I'll double it over. I've got the standard foot on, I've just selected a straight stitch and I've upped the stitch length just slightly. And as you can see, it had full control of the fabric while it was under the foot. And it's a really, really beautiful stitch on this machine, both top and bottom. Moving on to some stretch fabric. I've popped a ballpoint needle on the machine and chosen the lightning stitch, which is the correct one for this type of fabric. And as you can see, even on top speed, it had full control of the fabric. It's done a beautifully neat stitch, both top and bottom, and it's lying completely flat, which is what you want with the stretch. And you can also still stretch the fabric along with the stitch. I've got a piece of denim here, which I've already sewn together because I don't just want to show you sewing two pieces of this together because most people want to know how it handles the bulky bit of the seam when you're hemming them at the bottom. So I'm going to fold that over and show you how this machine copes when sewing over the double fold. I've popped a jeans needle on the machine. I'm on a standard straight stitch and I've just increased the stitch length because the fabric's thicker. And as you can see, it sewed over that with no problem at all. It didn't get stuck, it didn't stumble, and that's really, really nice and tight. So overlocking your seams, making sure you're choosing the right stitch on this machine is much easier with this handy feature that I'll show you. So we know that overlocking it looks like things like these, if you know what I mean. So what you can do is hit the question mark and then tap on any stitch, so this one, and it tells you what the stitch is. So this is a honeycomb stitch. You select it for decor decorative seams in lingerie dresses, table linens, hem finishes, etc. That's not the one we want to do overlocking. So I'll do that, try this one. So this is a double overlock. So this one sews and neatens your seams in one operation. So that's the one I'm gonna use. But this is a really handy tool that you can use on any of the stitches in any of the folders. It will tell you what the stitch is, what the stitch is used for, and give you recommendations on how to use it. But we'll select the double overlock, and I'll show you how that looks. What you're doing is lining up with the edge of the foot on this one. And you can see it's done exactly as it says it was going to. So it's sewn the seam and then it's overlocked the edge to keep it nice and neat. Lastly, I'm gonna show you how to sew a buttonhole using the Creative Consultant, which is like a built-in advisor in the machine. 
So if you go to the home screen, and then there's a little dressmaker symbol there, and I'm gonna click on that. And these are different types of fabric, basically. So you've got woven fabrics, denim, stretch fabrics, um, fake fur, all sorts of different types. I'm gonna do this on a woven, so I'm gonna click into that. I'm gonna press on the buttonhole because that's what we want to sew. It's come up with all the settings that I need, including the correct needle, the correct cotton, the correct foot to use. And so if I okay that, it automatically changes all the settings in the machine for me. So I can see that tension has changed. It's telling me I need foot 3A, which is the buttonhole foot. So we'll pop that on. And then all that's left to do is to tell the machine what size buttonhole you want to do. This is really fancy. So you click on the I and then go to the buttonhole symbol. And then what you want to do is the button that you want to sew the buttonhole for, just pop that on the screen and then just use your stitch width dial to put the circle around the button. Now don't worry about allowing for the size of the buttonhole because the machine will do that already. So you can see we've set the button at 16 millimeter. So it's telling us we need an 18 millimeter hole. So if I come out of that, it's changed it to 18 millimeters. So that's all ready to go. So I'm gonna pop my fabric in underneath. Drop the presser foot. And away we go. And there you have it, a perfect buttonhole at the perfect size for our button. There's one last thing I wanna show you before I finish. Back on the home screen, there's this little book symbol and that's full of different guides and tutorials and things on lots of different things. There's techniques that you can click on. So if you wanted to know how to do a blind hem, for instance, you can click on that, it tells you what it is how to prepare the fabric, what fabric to use, the needles, the threads, the settings, and then how to do it. It's a really, really useful tool. I hope that gives you an insight into the various different types of fabric that these machines will cope with. A quick recap for you. They are all computerized, which means they all come with a foot pedal, but they also have the start-stop button. They all have a built-in needle threader, but the needle threader on the Brother is an easier option. They all perform a buttonhole in one easy step and all have a twin needle setting. The Brother and the Janome come with spare spool pin to pop in. The Benina has a spare one on the top there. The Brother has six inches of space from the right of the needle. Not the biggest space, but it is lightweight and comes with a hard cover, so it's nice and portable. The Janome has eight inches of space to the right of the needle and the Benina has nine inches of space. They all come with a different range of presser feet and accessories. And with the Brother, you've got 80 different stitch options. The Janome is over 100, but then the Benina is over 1,000, more than you would probably ever need. You've also got all the automatic tension with the Benina and the assistance of all those guides and tutorials and the creative consultant. And if all that wasn't enough, this machine can also double up as a machine embroidery. So it's an optional unit that clips on the side here, but it has the capacity within the machine. So the technology is already on there. You just need the unit to pop in and away you go. I hope you found this video really informative and helps you decide on the best machine for you for dressmaking. But if you still need some further help, we are The Sewing Studio. We're here to help. We love talking about our machines. So please don't be afraid to pick up the phone. We'd love to hear from you.